Okay, welcome back to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to revise our the basics. So what we have learned so far, so let's take that thing as a particular aspects. And I'm going to compare that thing uh, with our practical implementation. So you can find this resources under the description section. There is a link, you can follow that to assess that resources. So now, every language is having their own script. So similarly, in a C++, we are having these character sets. Character sets means that you can't use anything else beyond this. Like you can't use any Chinese, Japanese, Persian characters. Okay, so now, these are the tokens. So tokens are the smallest unit of the program. So whatever you have, observed in this program that this hash include using namespace standard even the semicolon these all are tokens now tokens are further categorized into the identifier keywords constants variables strings operators and special character okay let's take them one by one first are the identifiers so the identifiers are things that we have some name given to them like here we have choose this variable name that is var1 var2 and a sum so these are the identifier basically these are the identifiers which is used to identify the memory location and it's very convenient for the user to identify that which value you have stored in which variable name now the next are the rules so we already covered these rules in a corresponding lecture so four rules the identifier name is a combination of alphabet digit and underscore second is the first character of identifier must be an alphabet or underscore it can't be start with a special character or some numeri and no blank space or special special symbols other than underscore is permissible and the last one is Keywords are not uses as a identifier name. Now, next are the keywords. So we have talked about the keywords even earlier. So whatever you have find in a bold font, those are keywords. Actually, these are the reserved words which is used by the compiler itself. So in a C++, there are 60 keywords. So here are the list we can't use these things as our variable name so these are the keyword list now data type so just like we have used int so basically data type we have used to give some memory space and it also give us that what is the type which data i can store do I have to store some you know, numeric stuff or some string stuff or some normal word or some character? It's depend all upon the data type. Okay, so now the classification of the data type. So whatever we have done so far that we have deal with the basic data type. In a further lecture, we are going to deal with the pointers, arrays, structure, union, classes, Okay, so I forgot to put a classes over here. So classes is also user defined data type. Okay. So now here are the list of the data types. So basically uh, the character, integer, uh, float, double, these are the basic data type. Whereas these unsigned, short, uh, long, these are type modifier. It's going to modify some characteristics of those data type okay so now now depending on your compiler as this dev we are using 32-bit compiler so we are going to follow this column so your character if i'm going to declare a character now let's declare a one character character mm, i have to give some name so i'm going to give a name uh, like uh, abc following all four identifier rules. Now, uh, I can 
assign something to the ABCD. Now here is a difference in a hello uh, program we just put that thing in a double quotation mark. So now here is a difference between character and a string. So in a character we are only going to use only one character or a symbol. It may be R, it may be something or it may be any 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 symbol if, even if you are putting a 5 so this is not a numeric 5 so this is a character 5 you can't do any numeric stuff with this okay so let's uh, even dollar sign and put a semicolon so this is one statement i have assigned a character to the abc variable okay so now instead of c out sum i'm going to print the value of ABC. So ABC is a character variable and I have put a dollar sign in that. So I'm expecting dollar sign. Yes, I will got a dollar sign as a output. So I store something on a corresponding relevant uh, data type and I can retrieve it on the output screen by using C out. Okay, similarly, uh, we are having a float when we have to deal with some point value so let's declare a float float let's suppose pi equals to 3.141 approximately so c out pi okay so here is spelling mistake f l o a t float is also a keyword so that's why it's an bold okay so i will got a corresponding output okay so now the integer will take a four bytes unsigned int unsigned is a type modifier and so unsigned int very first bit is used for the data rather than the value so similarly these are some type modifiers so they are the list of data types and this is a range like integer it can store maximum value 32767 it's work in a circular manner if we are going to store a 32768 that means it represent minus 32768 the more the value you are going to increase that is going to follow the circular fashion Okay, similarly, we are having a float. Float will have these uh, point values, and uh, whereas the double, it's a uh, you know having a larger size, uh, it's a eight bit. So similarly, if you have to store some larger, even a larger value, then you are going to use a long double. Okay, so the variable we already deal with the variable A B C. Mm, uh, okay, so then P I V R V R two some these all are the variables same naming convention will be followed okay so now the constant okay here uh, let's deal with the sum again c out sum uh, okay so here the sum would be var1 plus var2 or uh, rather take a new example for this let's take int a equals to 5 here I am going to write C out A. So now it's a very pretty simple program. I just assign some value to A and I'm outputting the value of A. So what should we get on the output screen? So I think it should be 5. Okay, it's 5. So now in between, if I am going to change the value of A, so that is permissible in case of variable. Okay, I can change the value later on in my program whenever needed so now here what would be the output the latest value the latest value is 77 so there could be a 77 in my output screen so what if let's suppose i want to store the value for pi like 3.14 so now uh, let's uh, give some relevant name okay Pi. okay so now I will get 77 so now here constant we can use a constant over here 
so that anyone cannot accidentally change the value whenever we have to deal with these kind of values so we always put a constant in front of it so now you can see that whenever while you're trying to change the value for pi it says that assignment of read only value pi so pi is now read only it's a constant value so now i can't give any assignment new value to that pi now let's run our program again compile so i will got a three so the problem is that so integer integer will have only the simple value not a point value so here so that is the importance of a data type so you have to choose a corresponding and relevant data type for your value so now let's go for it now it's a correct data type so that's why we are having a absolute value okay so now let's suppose i'm not assigning any value to this pi and i am declaring it as a constant so what will happen in that case again uninitialized constant pi whenever you are declaring a constant value you should always initialize it to some value okay so <clears throat> in the next lecture we are going to learn about the expressions okay thanks for the watching